Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 18 of Novel Therapy. I'm Kate Fennessy, aspiring author and social media marketer. And I'm New York Times bestselling author, Helen Brown. Hi, Kate. Hi. <laughs> so we're <laughs> doing... We go further. Yes. Are you wearing your Cindy socks? Yes, I, I am wearing my Cindy socks. We have to explain to our listeners what these are. I'll just get my hoik my leg up. Mine are stripey. Can They're you beautiful. See that? <laughs> yeah. I would call those mermaid colours. Mine are more Scottish. Mine are red and black. And they are the most comfortable socks in the world, Cindy. Thank you so much for Yeah, so them. Cindy, who's so generous and a big fan of the podcast, sent these to Helen. Um, because Cindy was in Australia, wasn't she? And then just ha it happened right at the time of borders closing and unfortunately had to head back to, to Canada. Yeah, but she gave us this lovely gift and these these socks are the most beautiful socks I've ever worn. They're sort of got lined with a very soft fleece, not unlike cat beautiful cat down. Um and they're extremely warm. They're beautiful. So Cindy, we we hope we can have, have you as a guest on the show soon. It'll be lovely to e meet you or whatever. Yeah. Zoom meet you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, so what have you been up to, Kate? Yeah, well, I thought we'd just explain that we're kind of, we've had a bit of a, um, we've had a bit of a rejig of our podcast structure just because so much has changed since we started this season. And obviously we're all in this kind of semi lockdown. So we thought we'd do a bit of a pivot, which is what so many other people are doing and just freshen up our structure. So we're going to talk in a minute about like what we've been up to. Then we're going to um, as you saw in our Facebook group, for those who are in the Facebook group, we want to really connect with you guys and find out more from you and have a bit more interaction. So we're going to call that section Indoor Cats because that's, <laughs> that's what we all are at the moment, whether we like it or not. Um, and then we'll have a main topic. Um, so today our, our topic is going to be about productivity in, the, in this lockdown time. And then at the end, we'll still keep sometimes um, our little social segment, but we've introduced a couple of new segments as well. So we hope you like it. So I'm going to put on our new kind of music that we've made for the background. Yeah, let's, let's get yeah. going. Let's party. Exactly. So let's do it. This is our new structure. <laughs> so we hope you like it. And we do want to um, hear from you more. So make sure you look out for any questions we put in our group. Um, that's going to be really important. So, Helen, what have you been up to? How has your oh, week gosh. been? What's, what have you been doing or oh, not doing? I've been doing, I seem to have been just so busy, but if, if you <laughs> ask me what you just have, what I've been doing, well, it's very little. This afternoon, I was on my hands and knees wiping the kitchen floor with a cloth, which why? I have never done. Why? Please tell me why. Because there was icing sugar on the floor <laughs> from the cake I made. I mean, I don't know what's happened to me, whether okay. I've gone back into some, this is, this is like a handmaid's tale. I'm <laughs> expecting to wake up in a red gown with a white bonnet any minute. I don't know what's happened to me. So... <laughs> So are you, is that different to before? That's leading on to our question for the others, but is that, are you not, are you doing more of what you, like you didn't do as much of that? No. No. <laughs> no, I hate housework. I absolutely hate it. And um, partly having the house quite full with mm. daughter Kath and her boyfriend here and Philip as well. They have all been working very hard all day and I just end up feeding them and I, I've got a little desk, but I haven't, I can't do anything. So, yeah, I'm a bit hopeless. Oh, I got Hilary Mantel's book, which is huge, and it looks like the right sort of book you should be mm -hmm. reading in isolation. Mm -hmm. Okay. I read the first sentence, and it's so brilliant. Oh, I, I didn't know what you were going to say then. <laughs> yeah, no, I was completely in all, I paralyzed because she's such a wonderful wow. writer. so yeah so now I just use that book to prop my iPhone up when I read to Jonah in the mornings so uh, thank you Hilary Mantel <laughs> <laughs> so what about you Kate what have you been doing oh, and I just wanted to quickly point out to people who haven't seen Helen's um who don't follow Helen on Facebook or haven't seen these lives but Helen's been reading about Jonah with Jonah pretty much you're doing it like five days a week at the moment aren't you yeah, more or less, except this morning he vomited. And mm, <laughs> so awkward. Was, he you know, didn't you catch a moth the other morning? <laughs> yes, you have to work around a cat, you know. He, he can't be entirely 
human and I not neither would I want them to be yeah but yeah. it's lovely the feedback I get from that yeah it's been lovely I recommend people to check it out it's something so beautiful about being read to um yeah I'm sort of similar I haven't been on hands and knees wiping the floor although Emmy did explode lemonade all over the bench and floor the other day so I kind of did with a paper towel um but look I've been I don't know I seem to have um waves of energy and then dips where I realize I can lounge around as if I'm on holiday a little bit. So I've been reading, I, I finished last night, Marion Keyes' latest novel, Grown Ups, which oh, wow. it's wow. funny because I'm such a Marion Keyes fan, even though it's pretty light, it's, it's pretty light and fluffy, easy reading fiction. It's not ever going to sort of, they're not the kind of books that stay with you or really challenge your thinking, but sometimes that's not what you want. Um, I have to say this one... I don't know whether she was too ambitious. There was a lot of characters and I wasn't in the mood to keep trying to work out who was who. I found that it was too many characters. I got through it. In the end, a romance tract kept me really like by the end, I was quite excited just to know, oh my God, are they going to pash? Like it was, that was all I needed to care. <laughs> you know, I think this yeah. is part of the corona thing too though Kate not being mm. able to concentrate and that's yeah. okay you know things that were, were mm. hooking our attention six months ago it's really hard it's to get such traction a, with such an interesting point because for me I almost felt a bit guilty to not yeah, no, love don't. a Marion Keys book because I usually just dive in and, and I'm gone for three days and it's all over this took a bit more effort so that was kind of weird um I'm watching Shits Creek a lot which is a oh, Netflix yeah. series yeah. That is not demanding anything of my brain. And that's interesting you pointed that out because I'm not finding that difficult. I'm finding that completely perfect. Okay. And you see, um, this is a, mm. another one where our tastes differ because yeah. I, can't, I watched try to watch one episode and couldn't watch it. But I've just got hooked into unorthodox. Hey, I've heard a lot about brilliant. this. Is yeah. it? Yeah, everyone's saying it is. So that must mean it's one to watch. So there you go. So we're both kind of similar, wiping up lemonade. Yeah, and, and I think everyone around the world is in this state. And it's yeah. okay. We're dealing with a lot. Mm. And so it's time to be kind to us as I watch you drinking that lovely looking glass of red wine. Local Pinot Noir. <laughs> Of course. Oh, well, look, our music's finished. So we've just done that perfectly. So the, the next little segment we've come up with is called Indoor Cats, which is a cool name, especially for those who've been watching a certain Tiger, tiger King. That's tiger what it's called, isn't it? <laughs> what does Carol Baskin say? Hi there, you cool cats and kittens, is it? Is that her line? Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is kind of Helen's oh, idea, which is exactly right, is that people – People are just wanting to share their experiences at the moment. So Helen had this idea to ask our group, which has 120 odd members, which is fantastic. Um, we wanted to know what has coronavirus made you do that you've never done before? And we weren't even sure what people, whether that answer, but we got so many wonderful answers. Um, so we'll go through a couple of them and, and maybe discuss that for a little bit because it was wonderful and just we want to do this more. So please keep an eye out. We're going to be asking more group. We're going to be asking more questions in the group that might be related to our main theme or just might be other things we want to hear from you. But um, we got a real variety of answers, didn't we? Some people are doing heaps of stuff. Um, some people like say they're slowed down, but then it doesn't sound like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll read some of the answers. Um, so Maureen was the first to answer. She said something that she's been doing is actually talking to friends and family on the phone, something that was the norm 20 years ago. So that's an interesting yeah, one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. In some ways, I've found the last few weeks more social than any other time because of Zoom. We've mm -hmm. Zoomed family members in New Zealand. Yep. I've spoken to people I haven't spoken to for years. It's, that's mm. really precious. I have to agree. Yeah, so good I on feel, you, yeah, yeah, I feel more socially connected in some ways being stuck in my house. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. You know? We, we Zoomed all of Philip's family over the weekend. It was mm. lovely, you know, it his dad's in his late 80s. Sure. Yeah. 
wine and this bag of chips and it was great. <laughs> It's gorgeous. Um, so Hel another Helen, Helen, who's a local in my area, um, said that something she was doing that she didn't usually do was craft with her kids. She says, I always said no because it's so messy, but I've set up a designated area outside under the pergola and who would have thought it's actually fun? Which that is gorgeous. It's a beautiful picture. And I must say, your thoughts are with people who are at home with kids now. You know, mm -hmm. how challenging is that? Helen and has three. Yeah. She's a, a mum of three. So that would be a very different experience to myself with one teenager or people who are not don't have kids. It's a totally different world. Um, you <laughs> know, in, so many, in many ways, this time has reminded me of growing up in the 50s and 60s. And mm -hmm. this is the sort of thing our mums had to do because there was mm -hmm. no telly and no, well, radio maybe at night. And so yeah. the idea of setting up something outside, except usually we'd be left to do it by yeah. ourselves. So just, Helen's been a very <laughs> responsible That's parent. a good point, isn't it? Because that, that's the sense I get of, of childhood's in the past is that you were left to your own devices. You had to come up with your Absolutely. own stuff. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. So good on you, Helen. That sounds yeah. fantastic. And then Muriel, who's a fellow writer, said, I've slowed down without, without actually being on holiday, which I've previously found almost impossible. I've collected seeds for the garden from supermarket veggies um, and I have every intention of planting them. So that's Again. a lovely slowing, isn't it? It is, and again, it's a return to the past. You know, I think of my Aunt Lila, that's the sort of thing she used to do, as well as collect seaweed off the beach, which you're probably not allowed to do now, and mushrooming <laughs> on people's farms. You know, it's lovely, and it's about being human again. Yeah, it? it's so true. I think it's a return to some of those sort of, you know, values from earlier times, I guess, that people my age hear about but now are getting a chance to experience and yeah. you really prioritize what's important in life and really it's a very few things that Correct. really matter yeah mm. the ingredients are not many you're right it's just as long as everyone's safe and well and you're together and connected an interesting yeah. one was matt um who, who said thinking of him stop whim yes. stop whimsically spending money and i think it's so true that you really notice how flippant you can be and how you can just be on this treadmill of spending, shopping, spending, doing, spending, shopping, you know, and it kind of is a bit pointless and it is a bit, it doesn't really and add still, to those key things. No, and you still feel empty inside after a day's shopping, mm -hmm. you know, and all the stuff, you, you don't know what you're going to, you'll end up in the recycle bin in three months time. Mm. Yeah, I thought that was a great comment. Yeah. yeah, and then we've had this, the super productive as well. We've got Andrea here from the Peninsula Writers Club saying she wrote flash fiction every day, twice a day, cooked a different <laughs> recipe every day for 32 days. I mean, I think that deserves a medal. I can't even comprehend that. I actually had to Google flash fiction, but I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and it's you basically have to write a novel of roughly a thousand words. So it's something someone can read on a bus or a train. You know, that that's like poetry. That's a big achievement. Yeah. Well done, Andrea. Yeah, but that's cooking, cool. cooking, what? That cooking. Yeah, that's cooking, that, that blows my mind. I can't cook for 30 days, two days in a row under any circumstances. I, I bow... <laughs> I bow to you, Andrea. I really and then there do. was my cousin Emma, which was a classic. She said that um, she started a sourdough starter and then came to her senses when she forgot to feed it and remembered that bakeries are still open and are really good at making sourdough. That is That's a good Emma. thing to realise. That's Emma. Yeah, it is. But this is the woman who steam cleaned her bathroom. <laughs> yes. I mean, I got steam clean bathroom envy when I read that. Oh, <laughs> I've never thought of doing so that. Funny. So have you got more things, Helen? Like, because I actually had to stop and think about this, but what have you sort of done that, um, I mean, what, what has coronavirus brought out in you, apart from being on your all fours, cleaning up the kitchen floor, buzz cutting your husband's? Hair. Yeah, well, that was, and, and for the first time in my life, I was on the phone to the hairdresser today, and he is going to give Philip instructions on Saturday how to do my roots, <gasps> I mean, my hair That's roots. exciting. So you two are looking after each other's grooming. Yeah, we have to. And, and so this lovely hairdresser, Alex, he sent me the hair dye and a little bowl and a brush, and he's going to tell Philip how to do it. So. 
<laughs> so that's another oh, first for us. My God, please take a photo of that. Um, oh, no. And, yes. and I was cutting Philip's hair. That was a first for me. I was trying to get out of it because I didn't want to do it and I thought I might chop his head off. But it's actually surprisingly easy mm. and it was almost sensual. You know, like those <laughs> And he once he trusted me. going to make me go red. <laughs> uh, uh, well, it was it was okay, and I oh, don't think it's very intimate, isn't it? Yeah, even if it was on the deck outside with a towel around his neck and the magpies squawking, but you know, it was great. It was great. It was life changing. Oh, so you know, gorgeous. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? It is interesting. Well, I reflected yeah. on a few things too, because at first I was like, I don't think I'm doing anything differently. But then I was like, yes, I am. For one, I'm talking to strangers a lot more. The other day I put the bins out and two older ladies walked past. No, I was put, getting my groceries out of my car and I had my big, <laughs> my big pack of toilet paper, which I'd managed to get because they're starting to restock them now. So as I was kind of had that in my hands, I said to the ladies, look, I've got toilet paper. And we discussed how crazy it had been. And we discussed how paper towels could have been swapped in. And it was just this cute discussion that I would never, nor I can't even speak. I would normally never have with people walking past just my street. And I, I guess I've noticed a lot more people out walking and I have to say, I love it. I was already a walker. I'm seeing people in my neighborhood that I've never seen before walking. Um, so I've loved that. But little things as well, like I, for example, with Emmy, my daughter, Emmy said to me straight away when she got her head around lockdown, she goes, mum, she's, she's a good opportunist. She said, can I paint my downstairs study and my downstairs bathroom, which are horrific colours? And I kept saying to her, no, no, we'll get it professionally done. It's too complicated. It's going to be a mess. To be honest, I didn't trust that she could do a decent job. So normally I would have said, no, Emmy, just wait till I save up and we'll paint it properly. But I thought, okay, whatever, let's just do it. So I let her do it. And guess what? She did a really good job. Wow, she, she, that's she another it. one. I'd love to see a photo of that. Oh, I will sh I'll show you a photo. I've got a photo of her doing it. And she put all the blue tape really properly. She really did an excellent job. And it has transformed the back space, which was two colours I didn't like at all. But I know I just wouldn't have normally done that. I would have normally gone, it's too complicated. Um, so aren't there an amazing, oh, oh God, yeah, there uh, is one of the band words. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> but what, yes, yes, what a range of wonderful new things this experience. Is. And Jessie, Jess bought a puppy. Yeah, that's so cool. And Kate, my auntie, has also ended up in custody of a cat. And I think that she was certainly not a cat person and she said she is now and you can tell by all the things in the photos <laughs> she sent that she's spoiling this cat because it was in a little tunnel and it had all these little things and um, a beautiful ginger cat mr peanuts mr peanuts so welcome photos of her ginger cat yeah we've got going on a ginger cat jag for a while there <laughs> and cindy <laughs> made a point too that this might be one of the topics we speak about in the future that she's reading the news more. Cause one, one other thing that I did that I never used to do is I've been reading the newspaper on the weekend cover to cover. I've been reading the actual news. Usually I would just read the good weekend and the Sunday magazine in the age, whatever that's called. I just like the columns basically. I never read the news as much as sometimes my sister would tease me for that, but I never read news ever. I've been reading a lot of news. It's so that's different for me. Let's, we see I'm the reverse. I'm finding mm. that I am restricting my exposure mm. to news because yeah. I kind of know, having been a journalist for many years, I mm. know how it's created and I feel that there are so many gaps in the knowledge that journalists have as well as politicians. Everybody's kind of scrabbling and you don't mm. know who to believe and things mm. change by the hour. So I just try and ex watch or listen or read something maybe twice a day and leave it yeah. at that. Otherwise, I'd go insane, Kate. Yeah, no, you've got, to, you've got to definitely tap it off, taper it off at some point for sure. Um, and certainly not at bedtime. No, no. Oh. But um, one other change that I think, again, will maybe point to a topic for another time is I've very quickly, Helen, decided I don't, not that I don't want to be single anymore, but there I was just thinking, no, seriously, I, I've, I really feel this strong desire. I've got to keep my words carefully. I feel it's like I'm enormously attracted to men 
in particular at the moment. Like even around the street, I'm just seeing men and I'm just admiring their masculinity to a ridiculous level. I can't wait to get my hands on a man. That's what I'm just going to say. Well, no, I said there's nothing wrong with a good vibrator. I told you this. I said to that. That's but I think I want a boyfriend as well. I know about vibrators. I do think I want a boyfriend <laughs> in the future. So I want a date. I want a date. It has to be in the future. Well, of course it does. I want a yeah. date um, in the future, but we might do this soon. But some people are dating now, which I'm not interested in. I don't want to get to know people in lockdown. I can't be bothered. I'd prefer to just get on with my life. But after lockdown, what? I'm dating. So yeah, but we might stand and end up um, end up moving in with them because you had to, you know. <laughs> I can't yeah. do that. Emmy would be like, "Mum, who's that strange man in the back room?" And I'd be like, oh, "I can't explain." You've already had a you've had your first row by breakfast exactly. time. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. So thank you so much to everyone who answered. We absolutely loved hearing that. And like I said, we're going to keep putting questions in there because we want the indoor cats to be part of our podcast. So you are all in the fold now. Thank you to those who answered. And we're going to keep coming at you with questions because we, we're all in this together. We are. And indoor cats, I would love some questions from you too, whether it's about whether you're feeling guilty for not being mm-hmm. creative or you're being mm-hmm. too creative or you're just let's have some questions from you or yeah. whether you think Kate should get a <laughs> beautiful vibrator <laughs> I do need to upgrade one without going into too much detail I'm going to get off I do I need to go on Amazon that. Amazon yeah <laughs> like there's some woman the Sarah 92. gave me a good recommendation Sarah's in oh, our group yeah Oh, great. Good on you, Sarah. Okay, I know there's this 92-year-old woman in America who is an expert in masturbation. She's saying that it's an absolute must at the moment. Yeah, well, self-love. What else have we got? Nothing. Um. <laughs> Make love to yourself. And what, that's not a bad thing, actually, is No, it? I probably need to learn that. In fact, there's an app that I've been meaning to get for a while called OMG Yes. My friend got me onto it. OMG Yes. And it's for women. It's an app for women designed to take you on a journey of self-discovery of your own physical pleasure by yourself. It's not a partner thing. It's an app for yourself. So maybe I should get that back on the agenda. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd love a review of that. Okay. OMG, yes. I'll, I'll check it out. Um, cause there's a lot, and there's also apps I've seen. Um, and again, this is good for topics in the future. I've seen apps where they, it's like it read, um, basically it's like an audio book of erotic fiction that you can listen to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so that be a good idea at the moment? I think you, so too. It sounds like you don't actually need. Oh, you think it would? Okay. Well, good. Don't yes. Good. <laughs> no, I do. I want a real man as well. And me and Muriel, um, who's in my writing club, were, have been emailing, and she said we need real men, not apparitions, because I was complaining about a certain person who acted more like a ghost than a human. So I want a real man in the future, but who knows when that will be, Helen? So. In the meantime, we're going to have to get creative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. And maybe maybe this is having an effect on men and making them reassess their approach. I hope, so. Who I hope so too. Maybe they'll appreciate us more. Not that everyone's man and woman, but, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how that all unfolds. But yeah. speaking of main topics, our main topic, we're going to – we're going to head into our main topic, which today – um, we wanted to talk about productivity and this idea that you, you know, is it okay not to be productive during lockdown? Because I think we've both seen that topic coming up a little bit. So what are your thoughts, Helen? Like what's your initial kind of thoughts on productivity at this time? Particularly well, for creative I, types. Yeah. Originally, I felt very guilty that I was not able to produce a single word of this book I'm supposed to be writing. And mm-hmm. Philip went to Big W and got me a little desk. Aww, and I still haven't been able to sit mm. at it. Mm. And look, I she said a lot of academic writers are having a similar sort of thing that they can't write, whereas others are just going ballistic. So yeah. I think people are responding differently. But yeah. I th- Look, I've been talking a lot to my toenails. <laughs> I actually—they are great because I beg your pardon. They, they're, they're naked for the first time in about ten years because oh. they've always had polish on them, and you know 
there's something lovely about sitting on the deck talking to your new toenails. They look a bit white because they've had too much paint on them. But, you know, I think that's great. And then I got a magnifying mirror, which was a big mistake. I was going to say, that sounds like a terrible idea. I know. I I look like Johnny Depp in the Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, I've got this massive sort of blonde moustache and (laughs) his was black, but it's the same size. (laughs) So this is how I've been created. Yeah. But look, I have read that, and this might appeal to you, mm. that it's really good to keep a lock in a lockdown, like Anne Frank, God rest her soul. Mm-hmm. But if you write just a daily diary, like um, mm. in your case, bought a new vibrator, <laughs> well, then someone, one of your grandchildren, one day they'll be rummaging through an attic and find this notebook and they'll say, oh, this was written by someone who survived mm-hmm. the coronavirus. Yeah, you know. that's true. It's historic. Well, I think I mentioned in another podcast um, that Muriel and I from Writers Club have been kind of emailing each other in a letter style. So I feel like oh, that's yeah. going to be a beautiful little legacy for both of us. And, um, yeah, that, that's been lovely. Um, yeah, so I'm sort of the same. I've been journaling a lot, which I always tend to do anyway, but I have been a bit frozen with my novel and felt – I just keep spinning in dizzy kind of ways with all the work stuff. Cause for someone like me where my, you know, I'm, I'm the only earner and I've got to um, make sure my business is secure. So I've, I've given so much energy to that. I just don't have much left at the end of the day, but how much, Oh, sorry. And how much energy you have to put into washing your hands, Mm -hmm. all these other things, you know, just hygiene, crazy stuff like, that's why I was on the floor mopping the kitchen <laughs> floor. <laughs> you know, I these think are it all... just takes energy to absorb all the yeah. things going on. I think it takes yeah. energy to absorb the news. I think it takes energy to go, oh, Emmy's not going to school for a term. What the hell? You know, like it takes yeah. energy to just be, have an equilibrium at the moment, let alone be productive, I think. Yeah. It has been described as grief um, mm. for our former lives, but I wouldn't actually call it that because I think anyone in the harsh throes of grief this isn't like that this is just different it's waking up each morning and not knowing what the hell day it is and that's fine you know Mm. it's very interesting it is and I look at Jonah he's a great role model because he doesn't care (laughs) what day it is well Ziggy's down there at the moment just asleep next to me Ziggy I know she's so cute um but it's funny this at the same time I think I've kind of clawing my way out of I think I'm getting close to writing the novel again soon because I think I mentioned to you that it's funny what you say about marrying keys and me being all distracted trying to read it. I'm ready, ready to add that overlay of Corona. I'm going to have a crack. I mean, why not? This whole thing of me having a crack at a novel is just to, to challenge myself to see if I can do it. So why not add this to it? Because there's so much going on in my head of watching how people have reacted. And especially in that first week and those, first few days, you know, some people went underground and just pulled the blinds on the world and others were quickly, you know, going to the restaurants before they weren't able to anymore. Like watching everyone's reactions has been so fascinating. And I kind of, on some level, and you've said this to me that you're thinking of your novel, you're working on it on some level, like it's processing away in my brain that all my characters can be completely exposed and shown in different ways by adding this layer of of this because there's the complacency some failed and the, oh, this is just a flu, aren't we all overreacting? I mean, I can just still see all the reactions from that first week from people around me. So I think bringing it to life in fiction, I hope I make it to writing soon. But Good, but don't pressure mm-hmm. go easy on yourself and that's yeah. what I'd say to all of our listeners. It's yeah. not time to set impossible goals. It's not time to no. be perfect. It's time to wear pyjamas if you want to. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Wonderful. Well, look, the last little section that we're doing, or did you want to add anything? Oh, I was just saying how Mm. wonderful it would be to Mm. have all our listeners come in on the Zoom session one day because I'm still sad we didn't get together to have the live event on the peninsula and this way we could have everyone from around the world if they could get up at the weird times that is a great idea and we can definitely do that because i've been in sessions like that and people can write 
in the chat. They can talk to us and ask us questions. Oh, fantastic. Yes, that is wonderful. a wonderful idea. I love that. Um, and uh, usually on our regular sort of um, way that we do our podcast, we have social, I think we called it Planet Social, but we're going to swap in a few different ones because of the time. So one of those is going to be Comfort Corner. And sometimes we're going to talk about pets. So today we're going to talk just quickly towards the end here about comfort and just anything that's bringing you comfort at the moment. And we might um, put that out to our Facebook group and ask yeah. what people are finding is bringing them comfort. So I'm going to press my little sound because it's always exciting to press Nigel. That's a sound of purring that I found on the internet. Um, so that's our comfort corner. So what is bringing you comfort at the moment, Helen? Are there any little things that, or little habits or? Well, apart from talking to my, apart from talking to my toenails, which is very comforting. <laughs> actually, one thing that is surprisingly helpful is my daughter, Lydia Brown, is doing free meditations every Wednesday night at 5.30 Melbourne time. And I've, this is my third week of it. And to, tonight, I really noticed a shift in energy. And um, from it's just half an hour. It's free. If you want to join us, please do. It's um, just Google Dr. Lydia Brown Melbourne and you'll find her website. We'll pop a link in the group as well. Yeah. Mm. And that is, that is actually deeply comforting. I was going to say wearing perfume because I've given up on everything else. <laughs> a little bit of perfume. Yeah. It's I've been different. Different. It's nice. Have you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have. Just every so often, even for a Zoom call where it makes no difference whatsoever, but it just makes me feel like I'm <laughs> stepping up. Yeah. Yeah. And BC, before Corona, I was pretty sure I was gluten intolerant. And so mm -hmm. I've cut that out of my diet. And one day I saw this freshly baked croissant that was oh. surely not gluten free. No. But I thought I may, may not be here in six weeks time. I'm bloody going to have that croissant. And it was the best thing I ever did. <laughs> I didn't get the rest. Good. So what are you doing? Kate? I love it. Um, well, see, I'm. I do. I do little things that bring me comfort. I am a. I'm not, not being a person who's ever done um, manicures. I've, I love nail polish, and I have quite a collection. And I love nail polish colors and brands. So, painting my nails gives me then a nice light pink color tonight. Um, this this color is actually called the Future is Female by a fabulous Australian brand called Kester Black, who does excellent who do excellent nail polish colors um things like that i'm wearing lipstick you can't see it now i wore lipstick the other night for a for a zoom catch up and it Saw actually that. made me feel fabulous like and i put <laughs> kitten ears on because we decided it was dress up <laughs> um i don't know little touches of self-care i'm doing a really really hard jigsaw puzzle with emmy it's so hard it's almost ridiculous it's that um painting is it climped the the gold it's like a golden woman Oh, and it's, kiss. Yes. Oh, is it the kiss? It's a woman and she's just got this elaborate dress and all the background is gold. The whole thing's gold virtually. Oh. It's full. You know, on. I tried to buy a jigsaw puzzle yesterday mm. and it's sold out. Yeah. I can recommend yeah. an excellent brand though. There's a fan, it's a bit more expensive, but it's beautiful. It's called Journey of Something. It's an Australian brand and they do beautiful <laughs> ones that you can um, order online and they're just what? divine. Is that the real name, Journey of yeah, Something? Yeah, Journey of Something. Oh, that's really? Called. Yeah. Okay. That, okay. I'm pretty sure that's, that's what right. they're called, Journey of Something. Um, is okay. that right? Yeah, I'll check it out. Uh, I'll put the link in. That's not a promo. Yeah, no, that's an Huge actual, that's up. what they're called, Journey of Something. And they do beautiful, um, unique kind of, the kind of puzzles that you could almost frame if you thought that that was something cool. Um, <laughs> Isn't it funny? Whenever you're working on a jigsaw, you think, I'm going to frame this one day. There's so much work in this. I it's know, but they look the ridiculous frame. Um, <laughs> yeah, so just little things like that. But um, reading, I mean, yeah, reading and binge watching TV, that's given me comfort. The cats, I think the cats have actually, particularly Ziggy, who's still young and little and kitten soft. I mean, I think she's providing Emmy and I with a lot of comfort, actually. Um, I think the timing, we got her in January. I think the timing has been perfect. She's been in Emmy's study when Emmy's been studying. And um, I think we both come and get a little, it's like getting topped up. You just, 
yeah. So I think I think so it's providing a lot of comfort as well. I, I, from what I read and what people tell me, animals have really stepped into their mm. own people's pets in this period. Yeah. yeah, they've made a huge difference to people's lives, particularly the people who are living alone. Yeah, the one. Absolutely, yeah. that's right. And I think that's what Kate's experiencing. And Jesse's talking get, about getting a puppy. And I know my brother recently got a dog for their family. So I think, um, yeah. Pets are doing their bit at the moment, aren't they? They sure are. So Pets cute. and teachers and supermarket oh. workers, doctors and nurses. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. I know. So many people. Lots of parents. Parents. Yes. Yes. How is it having a teenager at home, Kate? Um, look, it's been an adjustment. I think that, I'm, you know, I'm a single mum with a teenage daughter, so that dynamic is already can be challenging. Um and basically we're it, you know, whoops, it's just me and her. There's no one to bounce off. Um, so for us, I don't know, I feel like it was a bit wobbly for a couple of days there. I think we weren't in sync and we weren't on the same path. We weren't maybe communicating that well. But simple things like the puzzle um, and like giving her the confidence to go ahead and paint the back room and, and letting her do that. I think we're finding our way back to each other now. We're getting into a bit more sync. I think for me that that meant I I recognised I needed some time. I'm spending more time in my room basically by myself because, which which is upstairs and I wouldn't normally do that. But I've re- recognised that I need some time, and then I come back into the joint spaces if that makes sense. Um, and it means kind of listening and understanding Emmy's world. And I think when she sort of said to me, Mum this is really hard because all the things, all the milestones I had to look forward to are all gone. Formal, um, end of year exams, 18ths. 18ths are such a big deal when you're 18 years old. Um, No 18ths right now, you know, and just all the issue was talking about a gap year next year. Will you be allowed to travel? I don't know yet. Um, Mm -hmm. So when I heard her say that, I thought, okay, you got to listen and you got to understand. I said, that's valid. That's a valid feeling. And let's, so yeah, we're connecting and communicating better. I think for me, it was those two things, stop and listen and empathize with her world because they're real feelings. And then also make sure I get time out for myself because otherwise you're just bleeding. There's no boundaries. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, we're in a better rhythm now, the two of us, I think. Yeah. Tricky though. So when you talked about creating space for yourself it reminded me of Edie in Italy mm. you know and they're a month ahead of us and yeah you know, she was saying how she got up early to have time alone and yeah that's right she did. Study to, you know, mm-hmm. so I think it's a very sensible way to operate really mm-hmm. and how are you finding that because you've got a quite a quite a full house haven't you at the moment <laughs> <laughs> quite full on, yeah. and they're all working flat out all day and then I just feed them and then they we sometimes play a board game in the evening oh, like circa cool. 1956 yeah and uh, and then they go downstairs okay. um to their room and Philip yeah and I, we often will watch something yeah well. well Emmy and I like we're watching films together which is again something we weren't in the habit of doing um but it's really nice it's it's been a nice yeah. new habit to form yeah yeah. And I think, yeah, I think on one level, it's, mm. again, it's felt like a really precious time. Yeah, a precious that's time right. that we won't recapture. Yeah. I so know. I'm not in too huge a hurry, and I don't think it'll ever be the same again. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But do we want it the same again? There was lots of stuff it's that pretty. I don't want the same. Do you know what's funny? And I think I told you this, whether it was on the podcast, but in the past, when I first broke up with Bruce, my ex, and I was so scared about this idea of the blank calendar. For me, that was a very visceral symbol of like my life got taken away. I don't know what my life looks like. So I used to look at my calendar and think, oh, what's going to be on it? What is my life going to consist of? And ever since then, I probably almost went too far in having so many things all the time on my calendar, business networks, yeah. this event, this group, this, this. I look at it now and, of course, the month of April, everything that we had on there is all got a, just a little cross through it. Emmy's concert, uh, uh, my live gig, no, whatever. It's all crossed out. I now look at it and go, why did I let it get so busy? Yeah. And what, why, why am I seeing people walking around the streets that I've never seen before? I keep seeing a dad who's like skating on a skateboard with his two kids on bikes. It's the cutest thing. I keep seeing them around. And I thought, I bet you that dad is normally at work right now. Um, 
Yeah. So I'm asking those questions too. Why was I so busy? Why, why did I have so many weekends where I just packed it jam full of a hundred things and then started it all again on Monday, you know? It was just a distraction, so many distractions, and busy was such a good excuse. I, I remember, you know, when my mum was elderly and, and living in New Zealand, you know, and I'd often say, I'm too busy to come mm-hmm. and see you. And think, what is it, an excuse what for? What a excuse. Yeah. So maybe we're going to come out of this better human beings. I hope so. With so it's true all, that you point that out because I actually have to say I feel closer to Emmy. I feel closer yeah. to her now. I feel closer to my dad. I feel closer to my siblings. We've been having family Zooms that are pretty much one of the highlights of my week. And as my friend Katie pointed out, when you watch dad's face on it, he's just so pumped. He's just so happy. He loves it. Lovely. Because we've never done that. He gets to see all his grandkids in one go and children. and. It's actually, we would never have done it to bring it back to that question for our indoor cats. We would never have had a family Zoom ever. Why? We just n- never would think to do it. So, so we've got to have an indoor cat Zoom one day. Yeah. Shall we all wear cat ears? Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a brilliant idea and we can do that quite easily. So the question for our group, for our listeners, is about what's bringing you comfort, but we'll, we'll have more as we, as we figure out our new... Um, a new structure, new approach. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll pop on our our indie music now. But that was so um, lovely. I said lovely. That was so enjoyable, and um, <laughs> we hope you enjoyed it too. We hope you like our refreshed vibe. And um, yeah, yeah. We'll see you all next be kind time. To you. Yeah, yeah. Be kind to you. I think that's a great message for everyone. All right, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.